Have you ever noticed how the word gluten seems to pop up everywhere these days? From food labels proudly saying gluten-free to diet trends claiming it's something to avoid, gluten has become one of the most talked about substances in the modern food world. But here's the thing. What exactly is gluten? Is it really that bad? And why does it seem to be in everything from bread to soy sauce? Let's dig in, quite literally, into the science, history, and mystery behind gluten. Right here on History of Simple Things. So first things first, gluten isn't a single ingredient that someone adds into your food. In fact, gluten is a natural part of certain grains, mainly wheat, barley, and rye. It's a protein, but not just any protein. Gluten is actually a combination of two types of proteins, gliadin and glutenin. When you mix flour with water, these two proteins interact and form a sticky, stretchy network. That's gluten. It's what gives bread dough its elastic texture and lets it rise and trap gas bubbles when baking. Without gluten, bread would be flat and crumbly, more like a dense cake than the soft, fluffy loaf we love. So when people say gluten gives bread its structure, that's not just a metaphor, it's literal food science. Gluten is like the unsung hero of the baking world. If you've ever kneaded dough, you've basically built gluten with your hands. That stretching and folding motion helps align the gluten molecules, making the dough smooth and elastic. When yeast ferments in the dough, it releases carbon dioxide, tiny gas bubbles that get trapped in the gluten network. That's why bread rises. Then when you bake it, the heat sets that structure in place, creating that soft interior we call the crumb. Different types of baked goods actually rely on different levels of gluten. Bread flour has high gluten content for chewiness and structure. Cake flour, on the other hand, has low gluten content, giving cakes their tender, delicate texture. So whether you're making a baguette or a muffin, it's really the gluten that decides how your final product feels and tastes. You might think gluten is a modern problem, but humans have been eating it for thousands of years. The first domesticated wheat crops date back to around 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, that area we now know as the Middle East. Early humans didn't know what gluten was, but they knew that when they mixed crushed grains with water and cooked it, something magical happened. It became chewy, filling, and satisfying. Over centuries, people learned to harness that gluten-forming property to make breads, noodles, and seitan, a plant-based meat substitute made entirely of gluten that originated in ancient China. So while gluten-free diets feel like a 21 saint century trend, gluten itself has been a key part of the human diet since civilization began. So if gluten has been around for so long, why did it suddenly become the villain of the food world? That story really starts in the late 20th century when doctors began identifying celiac disease, an autoimmune disorder where the body reacts severely to gluten. In people with celiac disease, eating gluten triggers the immune system to attack the lining of the small intestine damaging it and making it hard to absorb nutrients. Even tiny amounts of gluten can cause serious health problems for them. So for these individuals, avoiding gluten isn't a choice, it's a necessity. But what made gluten truly infamous was the rise of the gluten-free diet movement in the 2000s. Many people without celiac disease started reporting feeling better after cutting out gluten less bloated, more energetic, and overall healthier. Before long, gluten-free products became a multi-billion dollar industry. Gluten-free bread, 
gluten-free pasta, gluten-free everything, even items that never contained gluten in the first place, suddenly started carrying the label. Here's a fun twist. Gluten isn't just in bread or pasta. Because it's such a strong elastic protein, it shows up in many unexpected places. For instance, gluten is often used as a stabilizer or thickener in foods like soy sauce, salad dressings, soups, and even ice cream. It can also hide in processed meats, like sausages or meatballs, where it's used as a binder to hold everything together. Even some cosmetics, toothpaste, and medications can contain traces of gluten, which is why people with severe celiac disease have to be extra cautious. So if you're trying to avoid gluten, reading ingredient labels becomes a bit of a detective mission. The gluten-free market has absolutely exploded in the last two decades. What started as a medical necessity for a small percentage of the population turned into a full-blown trend. Food companies began developing gluten-free alternatives using ingredients like rice flour, almond flour, tapioca starch, and quinoa. Today, you can find gluten-free versions of almost any product imaginable, from beer to brownies. But here's something interesting. Gluten-free doesn't always mean healthier. In fact, many gluten-free products have added sugars, fats, or gums to replicate the texture that gluten naturally provides. So while they're a safe option for people with celiac disease, for everyone else, going gluten-free doesn't automatically make your diet more nutritious. So the next time you bite into a slice of warm, freshly baked bread, remember, that stretchy, chewy texture, that's gluten doing its job. It's been part of our food story for thousands of years, and for most of us, it's perfectly safe to enjoy. Gluten isn't the enemy. It's the glue, quite literally, that holds much of our food world together. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.